Hey guys, we're at the very end of the story of the Sunday series. Uh, I know it's been a while for me to get back and finish the tale up, but this has been the year. This weather and family issues and things like that, it's kind of worn me out this year. So we're going to mainly talk about the end of the story instead of act it out. A lot of it that is involved in the character, some of it is family stories. Some of it is actual from Slave Chronicles and also some of the tales that Native Americans told about their time and living in the Mississippi Valley and when they went on the Trail of Tears. When we left off last time, we were looking for Brodus. Um, Mom and them went out there in the woods and uh, they found him. I had to uh, sit by the woods for a while because I got sick. I didn't know I was going to have a baby, but... <laughs> We're happy about that, but he is not the same. He is not the same. He's quiet. He's thoughtful. He's angry about a lot of things. We found out when we was in that village, because they have a village out there in those woods, that Broda's mama, and everybody knew she was an Indian, but they didn't know that those boys that took her were her brothers. They took him because his face looks like their sister, and they took him and they tattooed his face and they told him things that made him so mad how his mean old daddy, Granny Teague's son, made her work in that house and do things she shouldn't have been doing anyway. But Mama decided, since we found Brodus, we're gonna go find our family too. So we've packed up everything and sold off a lot of the things that we have and even dug up that chest in the backyard and we're gonna be heading on down that road because a, a train is coming a wagon train that's heading west and we're going to find our brother her brother I should say um, so many of our people have went down that road and went down this road and we've lost them and nobody ever knows where they are but we're gonna find him because if we can find one lost soul we can find another a lot of the stories that I told some people understood them some people did not we're not going to complete the entire tale because Hopefully this spring I'm going to give you a longer story of exactly what happened to Brodus in that village. Some of it you're not going to like. Some of it you will. But the stories that come out of the Slave Chronicles, I think everybody should go to their library or their historical societies and read exactly what happened after the Civil War. Some of us were not slaves. Actually some people would skin my same color on slaves. There's some that turned us in, some that were not kind to us, and these were our people. And we don't like looking that in the face at times. My granny has relatives who are as brown as my hand, and she has other relatives who are lighter than my palm, and they split off at one time. We know them and they know us, but they deny who they actually are. So you have to be careful when you hate or dislike or don't love or have whatever the grudge is against someone because we were separated and scattered to the wind after slavery and even along the trails after slavery a lot of us don't know who our family is do you ever see faces in the crowd sometime and think man that looks like my brother or my sister or my child or my mom you'd be surprised if you did a search on ancestry and things like that or even look through your family's old histories and pictures exactly who you are related to. I found someone I was related to who was always in my neighborhood but I didn't know that they were a cousin of a cousin and, and that's always exciting. But the Civil War has a lot of angry history but also has a lot of good history about how we overcame, how we got to this place how we achieved uh, success even in the face of so much adversity. I hope that you guys have liked the stories and enjoyed them. Some of them have been understood, some of them have not. The biggest, I would have to say, line that went through most of the stories were things that had to do with the senses. What you smell, what you taste, what you touch, what you see. I had a lot of people that sent me uh, messages that said they didn't understand a lot of the stories. But your senses, you always have to trust those. Those are things that hopefully in your life you're going to have to the day that you die. 
and hopefully these uh, stories will kind of pique your interest a little bit to go to the library or maybe even on your internet a little bit more to kind of find out a little bit more about your family, where they came from, did they migrate ways west like my family and I are going to be doing soon. We've sold most of our things and we've got that wagon packed and we're going to go down the road and see what opportunity knocks for us. There was a big migration after the Civil War of lots of freed slaves or free Africans or free blacks or colored or whatever you want to call us that went down that trail and had very successful lives in the West. They worked in mining camps, started their own uh, cities, their own towns, uh, teachers, lawyers, doctors, just like every other race has. But uh, this is the end of the Sunday series for now. And hopefully this summer we're going to come back and tell you some of the other exciting stories of Henry and Brodus because some of the stuff is too sad. It's winter and it's dark. And bye-bye for now, guys.